All right, I'm Dr. Michael Kahn, uh, vein surgeon, general surgeon, and today we're going to be performing a laser ablation of the uh, left small saphenous vein. Uh, our patient here came to us with complaints of aching, swelling, cramping, um, and burning and itching, and has been worked up thoroughly, uh, showed significant reflux in his small saphenous as long, along with the great saphenous veins which have already been treated and now we're on his last procedure. All right, uh, today we have Tammy, our surgical technologist, and Scott, our ultrasound technologist, and we're ready to go. All right, so we try to do this procedure as sterilely as we can, <coughs> given that we're not in an official operating room, but in the office, so. <coughs> Everything blue is sterile, including the uh, Scott's on there and the ultrasound probe. So the ultrasound machine shows us what we're looking at. Point out some interesting facts here. So what we're looking for is the vein. So the small saphenous vein is winking at you where Scott's pointing. The skin is at the very top and the muscle is all underneath. Numbing medicine here, so it doesn't hurt it bad. Okay. And what we want to do is get access to the vein. So we can put a wire in there, so we have a finder needle. If you look at the screen, you'll see the tip of the needle, white dot there, going right into that vein. What we'll see is a splash, a splash of blood here, so that we know we're actually inside the vein. As we watch up on the, on the screen up there, you can see the tip of the needle. You can see the wire here directly into the vein. Actually, see the back fall of the vein drop down like that. And see the white dots inside the vein now, and that's that little guide wire directly inside the vein. So we move our finder needle. And then we want to put a little more lidocaine in here, keep them comfortable. You okay up there, Jeff? Yeah. Showing us your best side. Gotta love mm -hmm. it. All right. A little tiny incision there. Open it up a little bit. And we take our four French catheter, put it right over the guide wire. And then that goes directly through the skin into the vein. And so now we have our, if you look up on the screen, you can actually see, we're going along there. So see the actual catheter inside the vein. <laughs> and it's that white line there. So, this is our laser fiber, which goes directly in here. And uh, you can see it pop right there. There's going to be a white dot that's going in that circle, that black circle, which is the vein. And Scott's following it up to where, where we hope it meets the popliteal vein, the junction. And you can see the actual fiber in there. And go back a little bit. You can see the tip of the fiber there. And now we're up by, you can see the little red dot here, and that's the tip. So next, we take out this laser or this catheter and we leave the fiber in so that has it moved. Now we have this little metal wand and it has little holes at the end and this is attached to an IV bag on a pressure bag that has lidocaine and saline. And that's going to be our two methods, our numbing medicine. So 
So we go right into that little hole. On. Oh. And every time I say on, Tammy off. Off. Oh. Turns on the machine so that medicine runs into under the skin. What we're looking for is if we look up here, you see the little white dot in that vein. You come back, now you see all that black. That's all the numbing medicine. That's the tumescent anesthesia. So you see another little white dot that's moving to the side. That's the tip of this rod. When I say on, you're going to see a lot of black flood in there. On. On. You see all that solution going all around that vein. Off. Off. And you can see over to the left or over to the right there is the sural nerve. What we want to do is get between those two structures, the vein and the nerve, on, um. and putting a whole bunch of numbing medicine to push that nerve out of the way so it doesn't get damaged by the heat of the laser. Off. Up. So as we put this numbing medicine in on, um. it does three things. First of all, it provides numbing for when that laser is fired. Off. Up. There's a lot of heat generated and that can be very painful. Number two, on, um. you can see off but up here, the vein is pretty big. But as you come down, that numbing medicine squeezes it and flattens it against the laser fiber so that the laser fiber is more effective. Third thing it does is the fluid acts as a heat sink and absorbs the heat so it doesn't damage the muscle, the nerve, or any other structures. See? So now we've gone at the length of that little wand, so we make another little point of entry. Little lidocaine, little tiny incision, and basically these incisions heal within a day and you don't even know that they're there. And so we get back into the area on, um. can you put the numbing medicine around that vein? Off. Off. And our patient's very good on, um. I've not heard a peep out of him, which is sort of unusual. Off. Off. <laughs> but everyone's pain level is a little different. On. Um. So we come up, continuing around. You can still see that little white dot there. So we're going to get a little higher. On. Um. Off. Up. Now, at that point, we're up above the little red dot, and we can see the tip of the laser fiber is right there. You can see that little white dot. And you can see it's surrounded by numbing medicine now. All right, so the vein is now fully numbed, and so he shouldn't feel any pain when we fire the laser. So now we have to just make sure we're in the correct position and we're not near anything dangerous. So we're going to see if we can find out where the two systems meet. So I'm advancing that little, advancing the catheter or the fiber down to where it meets the deep system mm -hmm. down there. So I'm going to pull back. And Scott's going to take a picture and take a measurement of how far we are from the actual place where the two systems meet. That should be good. That's a good picture. So we're about 2.9 centimeters from the junction, approximately, and that's good. Anything over two is acceptable. And now, Tammy's going to make it hot. Our length is 42, and okay. there are little demarcations of how far we are from the tip, and that gives us our measurement of how long the procedure in length is. And here we go. Now what you're going to see is you're going to see a little, at the end of that tip, you're going to see some cloudy looking stuff inside the vein. That's going to be the heat being generated. You can actually see the, almost like the smoky pattern and it's contained inside the vein. So we know we're inside. As we fire it, the heat's being generated and you can see the patient's perfectly comfortable. No pain, no heat, no burning. And Scott's just going to continue to keep an eye on how we're coming. 
but you can see the progress of the fiber with the little dot. Just slowly allowing that heat to generate inside that vein and damage it so that when we put his compression stockings on after this vein should seal. And then eventually over the next 12 to 18 months, the body will absorb the whole thing. Getting down to the end here, and that's it. We have ablated the left small saphenous vein. Patient did well. Any problems, Jeff? Just waking up. Oh, there you go. <laughs> All right, thank you.